Dobro jutro. Aš sam Christian Youngs, aš sam od Amerika, aš sam učitelj po fizika, astronomija i porodni nauki. Za četvrta godina sam po kolegiju i običam da prepodavam. Kada učitelj po astronomiju, često si mislija za zvezdite. Karl Sagan je kazal, če nismo zvezden prah. Nismo načinat, po koj to kozmosat opoznava sebe si. Aš sam opoznal sebe si, Dosta točno, zada znam, če ne znam bolgarski, mnogo dobre, so I'm going to speak in English. The formative experience of my childhood was learning the names of the stars and constellations with my father. I grew up in rural Maine, and we lived on top of a hill, and on clear nights we would lay out on a blanket as my, my father told me stories using the night, night sky as his stage. One snowy Christmas morning, when I was eight years old, I received my first refracting telescope and a book on the nature of galaxies. Later that evening, shaking with anticipation, we used this elegant instrument to make an observation of the Andromeda galaxy. This wholly separate galaxy, or as the 18th century philosopher Immanuel Kant put it, this island universe, was 2.5 million light years away, completely outside of our own Milky Way galaxy. And it had over a trillion stars. I was awestruck. This was a eureka moment for me as a child. When I made the connection, the, the leap, there was a fundamental shift to my perspective to see the structure and the shape of our neighboring galaxy, and then to make the connection to the milky disk of stars arching over my head at night. It felt as if the ground beneath me had vanished, and I had fallen into a new vision of the universe and a humbling perspective of my place within it. I gasped at the moment of this comprehension, this this realization, and I had found my inspiration. After all, the Greek root of the word inspire means to breathe in. As Jason Silva says, we fit the universe through our brains and it comes out in the form of nothing less than poetry. We have a responsibility to awe. As a physics and astronomy teacher here at the American College, I have found that there is a fine line between invoking the sense of inspiration and inducing an existential crisis in the minds of my students. As Carl Sagan regularly said, astronomy is a humbling and character-building experience. As we look out into the cosmos, we can't help but feel small and sometimes perhaps insignificant. But the universe is not just what surrounds us. It is also within us. The atoms of which we are comprised were forged in ancient high-mass stars that exploded billions of years ago, enriching the molecular gas clouds with the heavier elements that would eventually collapse to form the next generation of stars and planetary systems. We are stardust. There are more atoms in your eye than all of the stars in the trillions of galaxies in the observable universe. Each and every one of you is a little cosmos of staggering complexity, which fills me with a perpetual sense of awe. And for that, I thank you. But it's not always easy to inspire these moments, these moments of a perspective shift that allow us to see ourselves and the world around us through a new and novel light. In my humble opinion, the telescope is the greatest innovative invention of mankind. It is our bridge to the infinite. As I sat outside, oh, excuse me, just as my use of the telescope 28 years ago caused a fundamental shift in my worldview, the discovery and invention of the microscope and the telescope 400 years ago 
caused a paradigm shift for our species. It heralded the dawn of the scientific revolution and the age of enlightenment. Never underestimate the significance and power that a shift of perspective can cause for you and the world around you. As I sat outside that night with my eye glued to the telescope, my father taught me the most important lesson about these elegant instruments. A telescope is a time machine. We cannot help but look back in time as we look out into the cosmos because of the speed of light. 299,792,458 meters per second, as my eighth graders could tell you. And it's not just about the speed of photons traveling through the fabric of space-time. It's the speed of causality, understanding the relationship between cause and effect, how quickly information travels through the universe. The past does not just flow into the future. It actively and continuously shapes the events to come. We know the universe is expanding because we can look out and measure all of the galaxies around us moving away. And we know this thanks to the American cosmologist Edwin Hubble. It was, and if we allow ourselves to rewind the cosmic clock, we would find all of the galaxies, stars, planets, matter, and energy converge down into a cosmic singularity of infinite density and order that had blown itself apart into the construct of space-time. We are the product of 13.8 billion years of cosmic, stellar, planetary, chemical, and biological evolution. You and I, all of us, are the universe experiencing itself subjectively. We are a way for the cosmos to know itself. Our species has come a long way in the last 200,000 years. From our origin and migration out of Africa, across Eurasia and Europe, eventually finding our way to Australia and the Americas. Along this journey, we developed new skills, created new tools and technology that allowed us to adapt and survive in almost every environment and climate on our planet, this pale blue dot we call Earth. As our global civilization continues to advance and grow, and our technology advances at a geometric rate, we are rapidly heading headlong into an uncertain future. A future imperiled by overpopulation, limited resources, increasing rates of extinction, and climate change. And most of these factors, most of these things were set in motion before all of us were born. At times, it feels like we can't make a difference, that we can't slow or check the momentum of the events around us. But this is simply not true. If you could travel back in time, just say 100 years, and you made even a small, seemingly innocuous change, I would argue that none of us would exist right now in this moment. With every, even a small change in a very complex system can result in dramatically, drastically different outcomes. We, each of us, in every moment of our life, have the opportunity to affect and change the world around us and direct the future of events that will transpire. We are part of a human network that is highly interconnected and interdependent. As Leonardo da Vinci said, for the perspective of the development of a complete mind, study the art of science and study the science of art. Develop your senses, learn how to see, and realize that everything connects to everything else. I think we're all searching for a life full of meaning, for a life of significance. I am here today to tell you 
that each and every one of us can and are actively changing the world around us just by simply being alive. Our existence is codependent on a countless links in an intricate web of relationships that date back to the origin of our cosmos. We are all one. And as Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change you wish to see in the world. I consider myself a storyteller, a life coach that just happens to use physics and astronomy as the medium and canvas by which I work. The topic of this TEDx youth event today is the essence of inspiration. And you will hear many stories and new perspective from our distinguished speakers. And in my opinion, the greatest source of inspiration is the ability to see ourselves and the people around us through new and unique perspectives. We all have a story to share. And when you share yours, I hope, I pray, that you see yourself as the heroine or hero of your journey. Your life is your great work. It's your masterpiece. And each and every one of us has a measurable and quantifiable effect on the future. Each and every one of you matter. I think that's an idea worth sharing. Blagoderia, Jamie, Badochu. Vadoch novite, pajolavamti, edni, porikrasen, jivot. Thank you. <laughs>